developing just this afternoon in Texas. An appeals court now delaying the planned execution of a woman named Melissa Lucio, the only Latina on the state's death row, who was set to be executed in just two days. She was sentenced to death in a capital murder case back in 2008 in the death of her two-year-old daughter. I want to bring in now MSNBC legal analyst Danny Savalo. So, Danny, this, this stay was granted to consider new evidence in a case that has become, in Texas and around the country, controversial, very high profile. You've had politicians, you've had celebrities like Kim Kardashian calling for another look at this particular case. Um, I, I think the New York Times framed it as rare agreement in a polarized state, meaning Texas, on what's happening here. Explain that and where this goes from here. You see agreement on both sides of the aisle, and that is a very rare thing, especially really among Republicans and conservatives, who are usually pretty tough on crime. But yet you see folks uh, almost universally saying this is a case that deserves a second look. And when you look at the appellate documents and as someone who handles criminal cases, uh, this appears to be a problem of tunnel vision. Uh, a first responder apparently comes on. Yeah, first responder comes on the scene, is suspicious of the story, and from there all the dominoes fall. Uh, now, when the uh, defendant is sleeping in her jail cell, that's a sign that she's cold-hearted in closing argument. Uh, all kinds of uh, things align after that, including the medical examiner who's operating with confirmation bias, allegedly or supposedly. And those are the kinds of things, and I, I see it fairly often. Once police decide early on that somebody is guilty, all of a sudden uh, they're a hammer and everything looks like a nail, in particular that defendant. And let me explain, just for folks who aren't as familiar with the case, and Dan, I know you'll gut check me if I say something that is not uh, 100 percent correct here, but essentially prosecutors had said that, um, that Luc Lucio essentially was responsible for the death of her daughter via abuse, that she had consistently abused her, her two-year-old. The defense had said the, the toddler tripped down the stairs, had had kind of a mobility issue, tripped down the stairs, seemed fine, and then never woke up from a nap two days later, right? And the question now has become, was she coerced into a confession? That is the concern that has been raised, and it seems like part of the reason why the stay was granted. It's very interesting because that fall down the stairs, what the first responder apparently didn't know, is that it had happened at another apartment where the stairs were much more precarious, much steeper, much and outside the building, so much more dangerous, arguably. But because the first responder didn't know that and they distrusted or were suspicious of the answers, which, by the way, you know, people under stress give all kinds of different reactions to particular kinds of stress. We're all different when it comes to that. Uh, and I can't tell you how often law enforcement views one person's response to stress or, or trauma uh, as suspicious when it might just be their particular way. And there are there is evidence in this case uh, that this defendant had been abused. And this is the kind of trauma that may have led her to respond in a way that law enforcement just distrusted from the outset. Uh, by the way, once you see a confession in a case, I can tell you that you're going to see a high likelihood of a conviction, even if that confession was co coerced. Juries find that stuff really compelling, and it's really bad for a defendant, even though the confession may be the consequence of an overly coercive environment. Danny Savalos, thank you so much for staying on top of that for us. Appreciate it.